All right, I'm gonna do something a little different here this time. We're gonna make a little series of uh, short videos going over everything with this thing. So if you don't know what this is, this is a, uh, what does he call this thing? Black sheep. Um, so this is a billet Hemi <clears throat> with a screw blower. And this is John Dox with Nasty Racing. And he named it right, man. He brought this thing to me and it is nasty. Like, apparently <clears throat> they don't have glass cleaner where he's from, but whatever. And the whole thing's disgusting. So he brought me this car um, and I begrudgingly said that I would deal with him again. Uh, if you remember one of my other videos, uh, we wired up Slick Rick for him. Uh, all of this is a joke. John's fine. I'm messing around. Uh, but he brought me this thing and um, he needed some fabrication work done to it. So I don't do that. So I hauled it up to uh, Matt and Brandon up at Performance Fab. They cut and replaced the entire firewall. Well, this whole half of the firewall because um, it was like hammered dog ass through here. The valve cover wouldn't even actually come off. So they fixed that. They fixed the fuel cell mounting. Um, the, if we look here, this burst panel's kind of in the way, <clears throat> but that, so you couldn't rotate the injector upward like the other ones are. Um, so they machined the bottom of the rail so you could actually swivel the, uh, the injector so we can actually get a connector on it. Um, they remounted the dash. They did a handful of other stuff. So here's what we got going on. We have to wire this thing. So this car used to have, this is the um, hydraulic roller LS car, um, black sheep. Here, we'll look at it from the side. Probably looks a little bit more familiar this way. All right, so this is black sheep. Um, this was like, I don't know. I can't follow all the, the fake little LS records from y'all people. So it was like the fastest or the slowest or something hydraulic roller LS. I, I don't really know. But anyway, uh, it's G body, um, that had a hydraulic roller turbo LS in it. And, uh, they decided to be men and put a Hemi. And I believe that Scott Sublet had a lot to do with this about being a man because I don't foresee John, um, you know, making that decision on his own. I just, it doesn't seem like a John thing, you know? So anyway, I'm surprised John didn't want to put like a four cylinder in it, but, um, but anyway, so we're going to go over documenting wiring this thing and then setting up the blower, because I think that a lot of people will be interested in this. Um, so this is going to be, you know, the typical suspects, Holly Dominator, Pro 600, um, this thing's a cob, but I got to put a little, I got to put a little respect on it. Um, it's pretty rough, but it's fast. Uh, this car was, this car with the hydraulic roller was very fast. So the, uh, the goal is obviously to be a little bit faster with it. Um, I think that the goal for John is going to be to, um, be able to keep his foot in the throttle, you know, but this one's going to be a little bit different and interesting to tune. Um, because there's no O2s, which is fine. Uh, this is going to be a reading a spark plug thing. Um, reading EG, or looking at EGTs and reading spark plugs. So uh, this is a before. I haven't stripped anything out of it. This is a before what was in the car. We're going to, I wanted to just film this so that um, we had a point of reference that when we're all done, you kind of see the difference of what we did versus what he brought us. These are spark plug wires, so disregard that. These are the EGTs because they had to pull that header off. But uh, anyway, we're going to redo this whole thing top to bottom. So let's talk about the, you know, the elephant in the room. So when you do one of these, you still need throttle position. So we got um, Forrest over at Scarlet Solutions um, supplied all the sensors for John, uh, him and John. Uh, John bought all the sensors from from uh, from Forest, and then uh, we're using this right here is going to be for our throttle position sensor. So I have to take this bracket off, drill and tap it um, for different size that's already in here. So we're going to bolt a two-inch stroke shock 
travel sensor here, from here to here. It's a zero to five volt, so it's not anything you know out of the ordinary. I've done this on a few of the carb cars that we've done. Um, there's still guys out there that want carburetors that but want Holly to do all the data logging and ignition control. So this will have a two inch stroke shock travel sensor and it'll change voltage when you go whoopa, right? Um, so we'll go over setting that up and uh, how to use that. But um, the blowers, the screw blowers like this, and this thing may look like ancient, but it's actually not. This is actually a really good blower. This is a magnesium case. That's why they look a little rough. Um, the, uh, but the blowers, they get really hot. So what some people do is they do um, mechanical injection up here underneath of the, uh, the, uh, the snorkel, right? Underneath the bug catcher. Um, they do mechanical injection and then they do electronic fuel injection down here. Um, there's a couple people now in the past few years that have switched the cars over to 100% electronic fuel injection. And John is going to be one of those people. Um, so he's got a set of injectors up here, eight injectors up here in this plate, right? This is pre-blower fuel. And then this is post-blower fuel. So <clears throat> if you think about this, the fuel that you inject in here cannot be used to trim individual cylinders because once it gets in there, it goes through the screw, do, 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 bam into the engine, right? So it goes wherever the hell it wants. Now, <clears throat> what's the purpose of putting a bunch of fuel in up here? Well, the biggest thing is, is that we need a ton of fuel for this motor, but it keeps this cool, right? So you've probably seen the guys when they fire these things up, before they make a pass or before they fire them up, they'll uh, they'll open this up and they'll spray a little bit of de-icer in here um, or gasoline or whatever to get them to fire. The uh, So we're gonna inject, uh, I think we're gonna use 60% of the fuel flow through here and 40% of the fuel flow down here. So the goal here is to keep this thing alive. It's gonna run very rich if you look at any blower car, you typically, if you watch any videos of them, they'll fire them up, they do the burnout, and then you've got like basically raw fuel pumping out of here. And there's a reason for it. You wanna to try to keep that thing cool. Uh, that's how you make power. So we've got 60% fuel up there, 40% fuel down there. <clears throat> then uh, we've got no O2s. So, uh, I mean like none, zero, we've, but we do have EGTs. There's not even O2s on this thing. We're going to wire and stub out behind the firewall for 202s just in case he ever changes his mind with combinations so he can you know if he wants to down the road he can change it the <clears throat> we'll probably be uh we'll be using a uh, a rife high intake air temp sensor down at the bottom of that um intake manifold and we're probably going to be doing some fuel offsets <clears throat> with that as well these things get hot <clears throat> excuse me and get hot fast so this is a, a screw with a Hemi. Um, we'll go over, you know, as it comes time to start doing this stuff, we'll go over about setup. There's a couple different weird setup things on this. <clears throat> this uses a Leahy crank sensor down here. So we'll go over how to do that. Um, this uses a old school RCD cam sync. Uh, I'll pull this out and I'll show y'all how to do that. Um, oh, and the... Uh, we're also probably going to have to put a primer pump on this thing. So I'm anti-primer pump um, <clears throat> only for a very few scenarios do I feel like you actually need a primer pump. And this is one of them. And the reason being is I'm holding my phone level, my camera. And if you look, here's the lid. Here's the inlet of the pump. So the inlet of the pump is actually higher than the top of the fuel cell. Once it primes, it'll be fine. The problem is going to be that when you go under heavy D cell, this is the uh, outlet from the fuel cell that goes to the fuel pump. When you're under heavy D cell, all the fuel is gonna go this way. It's gonna go away from that. It's gonna uncover this and it's going to lose prime. Then you fill the fuel back up, but what's gonna happen is the hose that goes from here to there, is gonna be airlocked. And 
when it's airlocked, it's a pain in the ass to get it to prime. So uh, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this fuel cell out. Even though Matt had this, this was an afterthought. This is my fault. And I'm gonna have him weld me a bung back here somewhere. Um, and we're gonna probably have him weld two standoffs here to bolt a, um, an external little primer pump to it. And we'll plumb that primer pump into probably this port of the regulator and it'll backfill all of this and prime the whole system. We'll only, you know, we'll put it on a, uh, probably do it based off of fuel pressure, right? So like we'll have a, uh, an output that's automated so that like when you turn the key or when you turn the switch on, um, the fuel pump will run until fuel pressure is X and below and you know, at zero RPM. So it can only run at zero RPM. We'll have to put a check valve on that line because when that pump's running, we don't want it to bypass through there into the fuel cell. So, <clears throat> a couple other things. <clears throat> John is insisting on using that switch panel. So that is what he really likes, apparently. I have no idea why, but it is what it is. So we're gonna use the Dirt Track Special 9000 right here. I'm sorry, this is the 4000 model. Um, so the old Dirt Track Special 4000, we're gonna use that bad Larry. And then he wants to put like switches over there to control lights and stuff. I, I don't understand him. We're gonna do what he wants. This is probably the hard part of this job. When you know that something is crappy um, and you really are anti using it, but you have a customer that's kind of stupid. So you, but like, it's hard to convince them to do otherwise. Um, so you just kind of have to keep your mouth shut and do what they say. This isn't a very good example of me keeping my mouth shut, but um, I've already told him that he's an idiot and he's aware of the fact that he's an idiot. So this isn't news for him. But anyway, this is part one of this thing. This is the way it came to me. Uh, Justin and I will get this thing right <clears throat> and then we'll fire it up and free rev it and then watch um, John probably crap his pants. So uh, we'll see you soon.